is Atul Ajatan Babu, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Aeronautical Engineering. And I am dealing with the course Computational Dynamics. And in today's topic, we will see the derivation of Mac Cormac's technique. So, we will just see in detail what is Mac Cormac's technique and how did we derive it and then how we have actually uh, taken this derivation from the lax window technique we will see and uh, what are the limitations of lax window techniques we have we will just recap it and uh, how did this mac cormish technique has overcome the lax window uh, technique and uh, what are the advantages in it we will see in detail so here uh, for the mac cormish technique so you can see that first we have uh, the lax of technique so where uh, the lax of technique is an explicit finite difference method so which we have seen in the previous uh, model itself so where we saw that the explicit technique is very straightforward and simple method so when it is comparing to implicit method so the number of unknowns are less for the explicit and uh, for the implicit number of unknowns are uh, very more okay and uh, here you can see uh, it is a marching solution so as i told you the marching solution in the sense so the variation so basically it varies with respect to time let's say you have dou u by dou t so dou u by dou t is nothing but uh, the variation of the velocity with respect to temperature so uh, time fine so the variation of velocity with respect to time is nothing but your marching solution and then uh, we have uh, the unsteady uh, steady state where you don't have any variation with respect to time and uh, we have the called laplace equation which is dou square u by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square equal to 0 so this is what we have so for this what we say so we say that uh, our La laplace equation is not applicable for the lax uh, window of technique okay so why because so this technique is dealing with the time marching or let's say marching solutions so the perfect examples for the lax window of technique is the hyperbolic equations and the parabolic equations okay so these are the basic uh, methodology so we have the continuity equation momentum equation and the energy equation so where uh, we see that the continuity equation is having the time derivative term here you can see this is the time derivative term and here you can see time derivative term here also you can see time derivative term here also you can see time derivative term so what do we have actually so we have seen clearly that yeah. we have seen clearly that so all the time derivative term whatever we have so these are coming under the marching solutions fine now you can see that uh, the space derivative term we have dou u by dou x dou rho by dou x dou v by dou y dou rho by dou v now so this dou rho by dou t dou u by dou t dou v by dou t dou e by dou t so we have to expand it using taylor series of expansion so why why because we need to find what is the value of density and u velocity and v velocity internal energy e so already we have discussed the internal energy e as cv into t so therefore the internal energy e is basically directly coming to the temperature fine so therefore we are writing it as cv into t okay so what is happening rho u v and uh, c v t so basically uh, these parameters are very very important to govern the fluid flow now what does the lax of technique is doing it is increasing the order of accuracy of uh, the time derivative which is order of accuracy is going to delta t square and for space it is going order of accuracy delta x square fine so therefore uh, the order of accuracy of the in time solution is increasing therefore the prediction of the uh, realistic uh, solutions are very very accurate so that's why the lax window technique and mac cormish techniques are basically uh, applicable 
for uh, getting the higher order accurate uh, time basis fine now here when we see the derivation of this dou rho by dou t in terms of taylor series of expansion so we have so you can see so we are writing this uh, dou rho by dou t is equal to so rho of i comma j to the power of n plus 1 or we will write it as t plus delta t minus rho of i comma j to the power of t divided by delta t so this is the formulation for dou rho by dou t now here what is happening rho of i comma j t is the value which is the known parameter and rho of i comma j which is t plus delta t is nothing but your unknown parameter so this is the known parameter this is the unknown parameter fine so this unknown parameter we are finding actually so this is what we are getting so rho of i comma j to the power of t plus delta t so here we can see so these are the terms fine so here this is the initial value and uh, this is the first derivative value which we are finding so from this you can see that do rho by do t is nothing but uh, i comma j to the power of t plus delta t minus i comma j to the power of t divided by delta t so if we neglect this higher order terms fine so this is what we have next uh, you can see the similar uh, similar expressions can be done for the uh, u velocity and uh, v velocity and uh, the temperature or internal energy so uh, this is do u by do t which is from x momentum equation this is do v by do t which is coming from y momentum equation and this is do e by do, do t which is coming from internal energy equation or let's say the energy equation fine now we can see clearly here so this uh, rho of i comma j which is t plus delta t so which is equal to rho of i comma j to the power of t okay so this is what we have next uh, do rho by do t so this uh, first derivative term so now here what we are doing is we are substituting the continuity equation formula here why because uh, in the first slide we have seen that the do rho by do t equation is this one okay rho into do u by do x plus u into do rho by do x plus rho into do v by do y plus v into do rho by so what we are doing so we are writing here so this is very straightforward we will apply central difference formulation so for do u by do x we apply central difference formulation for do rho by do x we apply central difference formulation for do v by do y we apply central difference formulation here also we apply central difference formulation okay so when we apply this central difference formulation and this expression if we substitute here so if we substitute here then we get uh, so the value of rho of i comma j to the power of delta t with higher order frequency so this is what we do okay and uh, the next term so this is very straightforward we have substituted and it is very easy but uh, what about the second derivative so do square rho by do d square is uh, very very uh, tough to get so what we do is like we will differentiate the continuity equation here you can see do square rho by do d square and when we are differentiated so we got the mixed derivative terms which is do square u by do x do t and do square rho by do x do t and uh, here do square v by do y do t so these terms we got actually the mixed derivative terms so this mixed derivative terms we have here so these terms what we need to do is we have to actually evaluate again the momentum equation so do square u by do x do t so this expression we can get when we differentiate the momentum x momentum equation with respect to x next this do square rho by do x do t so this one if we differentiate with respect to uh, x for the continuity equation next uh, here you have do square v by do by do t so this one if we differentiate uh, uh, the moment y momentum equation with respect to y and this one so differentiate uh, the continuity equation with respect to y 
fine so when we get these things when we get these things so they will substitute back but uh, getting these mixed derivative terms is very hectic so you can see uh, how we have so when we evaluate when we differentiate uh, the uh, x momentum equation with respect to x uh, what is happening we are getting second order derivative terms and again you have mixed derivative terms with respect to x and y then uh, you have second order derivative terms for all the expressions so when we write down the formulation of finite difference for the second order and uh, the mixed derivative so you can see this is the lengthiest expression only one expression which we have so only one term so this is the term okay rho square u by dou x dot e so this is the term which we are substituting but uh, additionally you have dou square rho by dou x dot e and you have dou square v by dou y dot e and you have dou square rho by dou y dot e so additionally these terms we have fine so therefore what is happening when we substitute let's say we have substituted this so it is a lengthy expression then if we substitute again one more lengthy expression so the major drawback of lax van der waals technique is the arithmetic operations are very very lengthy so the mathematical formulation is very lengthy okay so what do we have so therefore if we again get the second order derivative of dou square rho by dou t square so we have this so which are very lengthy and these are very straight forward which are uh, shown in the red color so dou u by dou x dou rho by dou x dou v by dou y dou rho by dou y so basically these are uh, uh, the first derivative term which is of uh, central difference fine now so this procedure actually we are following for other things also so when we follow for other things so to get a row at one point we are following very lengthy mathematics similarly velocity we have to get uh, u velocity v velocity temperature so these four parameters whatever we have these four parameters we are evaluating them with a the lengthy mathematics actually so that's why lax van der waals technique even though we are getting order of accuracy of delta x square and uh, delta t square so at a cost of higher accurate higher order uh, like accuracy but uh, the mathematics involved there it is very complex okay so now uh, we have recap like uh, what these the drawback of lax van der waals technique now how to come overcome the drawback of lax van der waals technique and uh, how do we actually uh, calculate uh, the higher order accuracy schemes uh, without doing the large or uh, lengthy mathematics is using mac cormack's method so that mac cormack's method is actually uh, shortening the lengthiest uh, procedure of lax van der waals technique so here we are getting the order of accuracy of delta t square and delta x square but with lower level math or low or medium uh, level uh, arithmetic operations we will see how so here it is showing that so uh, the same the time or the the value of density at next time level is equal to the initial time level plus this average so previously what we have done so we have substituted dou square rho by dou t square and we have dou rho by dou t so we substituted there and we got but uh, in the mac or max method what he is doing so he is not taking the second derivative he is taking directly the average of the dou rho by dou t similarly if you see if you see the u velocity term what we are having so the u velocity term is nothing but the initial value and again the average value dou u by dou t next v velocity the initial value and the average value so next we have the internal energy or temperature which is initial value and the average value fine so this is what we have so dou rho by dou t average value dou u by dou t average value dou v by dou t average value dou e by dou t average value so these average values we are calculating okay so that is the difference first initially what we have dou rho by dou t 
So we are substituted in lax and of technique of respective continuity equation, momentum equation, and energy equation. But here, what we are doing, we are neglecting the dou square dou by t square term, dou square u by dou t square, dou square v by dou t square, dou square e by dou t square. We are neglecting them, and we are replacing them as average. Okay, so that is the difference. Now, here, first thing we are taking a predictor step. So predictor, the meaning of predictor is nothing but initially predicting the value. So using the finite difference forward method. So forward difference here we have. So we apply uh, dou rho by dou t. So we know that dou rho by dou t is coming from basic continuity equation. Whatever the terms we are having in the continuity equation, the derivative terms are replaced by finite difference forward method. Here you can see. So this one is do u by do x. So this one is do rho by do x, and this one is do v by do y, and this one is do rho by do y. Okay. So what do we have here? So do rho by do t is equal to so rho into okay minus rho into so we have do u by do x. Plus u into do rho by do x. So this is the first term. Plus rho into do v by do y. V into do rho by do y. So this term actually we are writing in finite difference formation. In what forward difference? So here you can see. So this is the initial time level, and this is the next time level or the unknown time level. Fine. Now what we are doing? So the predicted values from first two terms of Taylor series of expansion is this one. Okay, so these are a first order trick. Similarly, so we have to do uh, the same thing for u velocity, same thing for v velocity, same thing for temperature or internal energy. Fine. So the next step is nothing but your character step. Character is nothing but what here we are doing correction. Now. So whatever the things we have, so first thing is the predictor, and the second thing is corrector. For predictor, so initially we have done forward difference. Okay, for corrector we are doing rearward difference. Okay, so similarly, so this one is what do u by do x. So for the rearward difference, so for do u by do x. We can take it as u of i comma j minus u of i minus one comma j divided by delta x. Okay, so this is what we have. Fine. So this concept of formulation is applied here. So where you have u of i comma j and u of i minus one comma j divided by delta x. Similarly, here you have rho of i comma j. Minus rho of i minus one comma j divided by delta x. So this is what do rho by do x. This is what do v by do y. This one do rho by do y. What we are doing in Mac-Cormier's method? We are taking do rho by do x. Sorry, do rho by do t average. What is the mean by average? For the average, initially we are taking the predictor. For finite, uh, predictor is nothing but forward difference. Next, character is nothing but backward difference. In the average scheme, we will take the half of predictor, the half of character. In the sense, we are taking the half into. So this is coming from predictor, and this is coming from the character actually. So when we do the average, so Here, what we are doing, we are not substituting anything. So this mathematics is very straightforward and clear. Okay, so this procedure we will actually use it for uh, the all other variables, which is uh, of u of uh, t plus delta t. We will use it. Next, uh, v of t plus delta t. We will use it, and uh, e of t plus delta t also we will use it. So when we employ this, what is happening? So we are getting 
the average value of the predictor which is forward difference and the corrector which is of rearward difference fine so here you can see so this uh, thing we will substitute here the average toward the flow so the same technique is applicable for u velocity v velocity and uh, the internal energy so with this we are able to get the order of accuracy of delta t square and the delta x square so delta t square we are getting delta x square we are getting and therefore what is happening so we are avoiding the lengthiest mathematics and we are able to write the short form math short form and uh, we are getting the accurate values so lax vendor technique you can see that it was very very lengthy but whereas mac cormack's method it was easy and straightforward okay so in summary so what do we have so in the method it has a predictor step it has a corrector step so first we will take the average value of time derivative okay then the average value of time derivative are calculated by using the predictor and corrector step okay so this thing the solution is advanced to the next time by determining that average value okay so this basically the average of the forward and backward difference is giving the second order accuracy fine so when we compare okay uh, the lax vendor of technique uh, with the mac or mac technique so both are having higher order accuracy scheme okay and uh, we can see that so the forward difference for the predictor and backward difference for the predictor has the second order accuracy as we have the uh, lax vendor of method so it is very easy to apply no need of evaluate second order derivative so this is the very very foremost thing so when we compare lax vendor of and mac or mac so do square u by do t square term so these things are not required or do square rho by do t square terms are not required okay so the mac or mac techniques can be used for unsteady navier-stokes equation so which is for the margin solution sorry. okay so with this uh, we have seen clearly so what are the advantages and the disadvantages of the lax vendor of technique so it is even uh, second order accuracy in time second order accuracy in space but very lengthy whereas mac or mac technique it is second order accuracy in time second order accuracy in space but what we have taken we have taken the half of predictor half of corrector so which is of forward difference which is of backward difference so with this uh what what happened actually so we are not required to calculate the value of do square term which is second order term is not required to substitute so with this actually we had uh, shortened the mathematical uh, evaluation of the technique so if we compare both lax vendorf and mac cormack technique so lax vendorf technique and mac cormack technique both has second order accuracy in time and space but the lax vendorf technique is very lengthy in mathematics and mac cormack technique is very short and it is giving same result as the lax vendorf thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates